In this video, I am talking about this new-ish Lyoa 12 to 24 mm f5.6 C Dreamer lens. And I am on location. I'm actually in a hotel in Poland, in Krakow now on my trip, uh, trip to Poland uh, when reviewing this lens. So yeah, the background is a bit different than my usual, my usual lens reviews. Lyoa have been making wide angle ultra wide angle primes and they and they specialize in those ultra wide angle primes and they cover pretty much any wide angle lens focal range with primes but this lens is a little bit different it is a zoom lens and it's a 12 to 24 millimeter with minimum aperture of f5.6 f5.6 aperture could be a downer to, for some people but this lens has been has been made for uh, landscape or interior photography when you would close the aperture down anyway it is a full frame lens and is available in sony e nikon z Nik uh, canon rf and also leica and mounts in some ways it is unique not only because of this focal range zoom 12 to 24 but also because it is this small as soon as you take a first photo with it you're gonna find out that this lens is very sharp it's outstanding sharpness performance comes not only from very good optics optical builds but also from this safe minimum f5.6 aperture there's some vignetting visible shooting at 12 millimeter not uncommon at all and quite easy to fix in post this zoom range makes it quite unique in a in a wide angle lens domain 12 millimeter is ultra wide giving you the widest field of view with this lens but also wide angle distortion giving you a more creative uh, way to to shoot your photos or videos Going all the way to 24 millimeter gives you more standard look but still wide i think it's a great lens for traveling with that gives you enough versatility to 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 just use as a one lens with you and without need to drag any other wide angle lenses it is fully manual lens so you have to adjust the focus and the aperture manually on the lens and there's no electronic contact with the camera so there's no uh, settings recorded to your photos in the camera no exit data it is however lens designed and built for more than mirrorless cameras and focusing manually uh, in a viewfinder it's not difficult or, or slow anymore with all modern cameras you get option you do get option to zoom in in your viewfinder or your lcd screen to fine tune that focus but also tools like focus peaking so you can actually uh, do it precisely and and quickly i took it with me reluctantly to Poland on this trip because I didn't think that manual focusing would be good enough for for traveling for the lens I travel with but in reality I just couldn't get enough of it uh, I literally it was a ton of fun to shoot with and very enjoyable too I think I think also its size it was something that helped to enhance the experience of just one lens uh, that I needed to when I was going out just like with most of the ultra wide angle lenses you can focus quite close to this one is actually 15 centimeters from the focal plane so it is literally at the end of the of the lens when focusing this helps to, to capture these almost macro like images but with this wacky uh, distorted wide angle perspective bokeh the subject to background separation is is there it's not something this lens is ever gonna be famous for yeah when you get close and you focus on something in the background does blur but it's not something you get this lens for and it's not important on a wide angle lens like this in my opinion at f5.6 there is some loss of contrast and some crazy flaring when you shoot towards the the, the, the light strong light but as soon as you close this aperture to anywhere to f8 this pretty much goes away also shooting towards the the strong light so it's like the sun or the lamppost lens lights whatever lights uh, this creates quite unique uh, 10 point stars which is really nice and it could enhance the photos too sometimes at f5.6 when shooting towards the strong light so it's also, you also get this this crazy looking rainbow like sometimes yellow flaring it kind of adds to the character this lens creates but it, it could equally destroy a good photo it is also a great lens for video work at 12 millimeter wide angle any micro jitters or small 
handheld shakes are less visible and, and the lens is more forgiving. Uh, but also the internal zooming, uh, the lens doesn't extend when zooming in, uh, it makes a great tool to use on a gimbal because you don't have to rebalance every time you change from 12 to 24 millimeter or anywhere in between. Built just like all Lyowa lenses is very well built, all metal construction. And although it is very small, it weighs quite hefty 497 grams. It will make your camera from heavy, even though it is small. The focus ring and the, the zoom ring are fairly smooth, not amazing, okay, absolutely okay. The aperture ring has got clicks and only five positions from f5.6 to f22. I find that this small and narrow zoom ring in the middle of the, of the lens is somehow hard to get hold of when you're looking through the camera and I very often nudge the focus or the aperture rings when trying to zoom in. I guess you, you know if you use it a lot, you just get used to it. The front glass element is curved and you got this small, very small uh, petal hood built in and you can screw traditional filter to it. But the lens comes with, with this. This basically is the extension of the hood which screws onto the lens and that can take standard 77 millimeter filter thread. The biggest problem with that is that you can't attach it to the lens when you're transporting it or in your bag, when you got a lens cap on. So when you put a lens cap on, this just doesn't fit on the lens, upside down like normal lens hoods. So when you put this on the, on the lens, your lens cap doesn't fit anymore on this, you won't stay on. So the only solution is you don't put any lens cap on the lens or you buy another just standard 77 millimeter lens covering lens cap. Annoying because you're gonna eventually lose one of these parts, the lens cap or this filter, filter, what do you call it, this thing. The price it retails here in UK for £729 or $649 in US. It hasn't really got that much competition, not at this price and not at this size. But you could compromise and get fully all syncing and dancing uh, automatic standard lens uh, for, for about the same money uh, if you shop around. Not 12 millimeter, but maybe something close, like you know, a 18 or 20 millimeter, 20 mm lens for about the same price. But yeah, this is 12 millimeter to 24 zoom. If you are a hardcore or pro landscape photographer or architectural photographer, this lens uh, delivers great quality and it could be amazing value for money. If you're not and you just really need a wide angle lens to use once a year, it could be it could be a waste of money. Conclusion. Ultra wide, constant uh, aperture, f5.6 aperture, uh, wide angle zoom. Yes, it is only f5.6, but the wide aperture is not always needed by everyone. Even though it is fully manual lens, it is very easy to shoot with. And one lens that not only can surprise you with quality delivers, but also how versatile it is. I think a lot of people dismiss these, these lenses because they're not Sony, they're not Canon or Nikon, but in reality, they can deliver amazing results. They are actually fun to shoot with. And as I always say, when you do that manually, when you put your aperture and your focus manually and you nail it, the sense of satisfaction is also much bigger than with any other or singing and dancing lens. I really recommend it. I like this lens. And this is it from me. I hope this video was in some way helpful or informative. If it was, please give me the thumbs up. Follow me on Instagram. Please consider subscribing and I'll see you next time.